When I was 26, my doctor called me with bad news. My testosterone levels were lower than my mother, who was in menopause. And I had no idea why. After spending more than $2 million upgrading my body and starting the biohacking movement, I discovered something almost no one's talking about. Testosterone decline has a lot to do with how your body interprets your environment at night. In the world we live in today, almost every single person does something to their eyes before going to sleep that tells their brain to shut off the very switch that creates testosterone. And men and women need testosterone, just different levels. And that discovery led me straight to the real reason that especially men lose energy, drive, and strength long before age ever shows up. Most people believe that testosterone drops because you're getting older. You hear it everywhere. As you get older, your energy goes down, your muscles soften, and your sex drive goes away. Doctors call it age-related decline. People blame their kids, their jobs, their late-night emails. The internet says you just need to lower stress, eat cleaner, and lift more. And I'm not saying those things don't matter. They do matter. They're visible and they're easy to talk about, so they get all the attention. But most men don't understand that the body makes most of its testosterone during the earliest stages of deep sleep. That's when a small gland in your brain the pituitary sends strong signals that tell your balls to release testosterone. If your sleep timing is off, those signals come at the wrong time or not at full strength, and your testosterone output drops even if you're in your 20s, like it did for me. Your sleep has a structure, and your hormones depend on that structure. The first part of the night is where your deepest sleep lives. Sleep scientists call it slow wave sleep, or N3. This is when your brain slows down, your body starts major repairs, and your hormone pulses are the strongest. If you push your bedtime later, you compress or shift that deep sleep window. And if noise or stress or late night light fragment your sleep, they chop those deep stages into smaller pieces. The signals that trigger testosterone and growth hormone lose their rhythm. And when that happens, you end up living in what feels like fake aging. Reduced deep sleep leads to consistently lower daily testosterone output. So your morning testosterone peak gets shorter and flatter. Growth hormone pulses also become weaker, so your muscle repair slows and your fat loss stalls even if you're training and eating the way you think you should. You wake up tired, you drag through the day, and you recover more slowly after workouts or illness. It feels like you're getting old fast, but what you're really seeing is a broken repair schedule. Over time, this circadian misalignment shows up everywhere. Muscle mass goes down, especially in your arms and legs. Belly fat creeps up even when you're not eating too much. Mood becomes less stable. Your motivation drops. Libido and that morning kickstand become less consistent because the nightly hormone waves that support them are smaller and less reliable. Your hormonal system becomes reactive instead of optimal, and it's like it's always trying to catch up. What that means is that misaligned sleep is one of the primary drivers of falling testosterone. It's not aging. And if you want to raise your testosterone levels, you have to fix your sleep clock. You can't out-supplement or outlift a body that never gets deep sleep. Most people think they get enough deep sleep if they sleep eight hours a night. It looks perfect on paper. Eight hours is what the guidelines say, so you can check that box off. But lying down for eight hours does not mean your brain spends eight hours repairing you. Most of that time can be light sleep or your brain is still half alert, listening for danger, or even dreaming and reacting to every sound, temperature change, or phone vibration, but it's not deep sleep. Light sleep does a little bit of recovery, but it doesn't trigger the same hormonal surge that deep sleep does. Deep sleep is where the real testosterone rebuilding happens. Your night might be full of micro awakenings. These are tiny arousals that your brain does to scan for danger. You roll over because your shoulder hurts. A truck passes outside. Your partner moves in bed and steals the sheets. Your phone lights up on the nightstand. The room gets too warm under the blankets. You don't remember any of this in the morning, but your brain remembers it. Every micro-awakening pulls you out of deep sleep and back into lighter stages. So each time you climb up out of that deep sleep, your hormones lose momentum. Your body releases just enough stress hormone to check what's going on. Those tiny awakenings add up, and each one triggers a small stress signal. When that happens over and over all night long, your nervous system starts to treat sleep kind of like it's a stressful event instead of getting full reset sleep. Poor quality sleep becomes a form of chronic, low-grade, tired stress. Your cortisol, which is a really useful main stress hormone, starts to rise at the wrong times, especially late at night. And you want to have higher cortisol in the morning, not at night. High cortisol at night tells your body to prioritize survival and alertness over growth and reproduction. And your body pushes down testosterone because it believes it can't afford to spend resources on it. So you can have those eight hours in bed and still wake up with low testosterone. Not because your body's old, but because you have a broken sleep architecture, the way I did. In a healthy rhythm, your body drops into deep sleep soon after you fall asleep. 
And those first one or two sleep cycles carry the most powerful repair signals. And here's how to start fixing that. First, choose a consistent 90 minute window for bedtime and protect it. For a lot of us guys, that might be between 10 and 10.30 at night. Decide on a wake up time that works for your life, like 6.30 or 7.30 in the morning, and count backwards seven and a half to eight hours. This is your target lights out time. Treat this bedtime the same way you treat an important meeting. You show up for it almost every night. And that's because it's when your body wants to drop into deep sleep and run its hormone program. And two to three hours before bed, stop doing heavy work, having difficult conversations, doing intense exercise, or even eating. Those are things that spike stress chemistry and make it harder for your brain to go into deep sleep quickly. Give your nervous system a glide path instead of a crash landing before bed. And let your body know the day is ending so it can start building testosterone on time. You can start tracking your sleep. Use a simple wearable like a ring, a band, or a watch that measures your sleep stages, your wake-ups, and your resting heart rate so you know how you're doing. You don't need perfect accuracy to see the big patterns. You just need to see how many minutes of deep sleep you're getting, how often you're waking up, and whether your heart rate drops smoothly at night. I've been tracking my sleep for 18 years now, and it totally changed my life. It's not that hard. When you see that two hours of deep sleep becomes 90 minutes, or 90 minutes becomes 45, it's kind of obvious why you feel wrecked the next morning, even if you got eight hours in bed. You can't fix what you don't measure. And next, look at your alcohol and heavy dinners, because those are two of the biggest killers of deep sleep. Alcohol before bed might make you feel drowsy and even help you fall asleep faster, but it fragments your sleep, raises your heart rate, and it shreds your deep sleep. Yes, even one glass of wine can do that, sadly. Heavy dinners, especially eaten late, do something similar. If you eat a large meal near bedtime, your body has to divert a lot of blood and energy away from the brain into your gut to digest. Your core temperature will also stay higher, and that means you block deep sleep because your body thinks it's still in daytime mode because you just ate a bunch. If you're going to drink alcohol, at least cut it off three to four hours before bed, or best of all, just remove it. It's not going to help you with testosterone or sleep. And eat your last bite of food at least three hours before you plan to sleep. You will see your deep sleep minutes rise and your heart rate drop once your body's not trying to digest the same time it's trying to put you into deep sleep. After that, look at your sleep posture and look at the temperature of your room. Your body sleeps best when your neck is neutral, when your chest is open and you have support for your hips and knees so your spine stays straight instead of twisting all night. If your posture in bed is bad, your muscles and joints send pain signals and they keep pulling out a deep sleep to move. You'll line your pillow so your head is not bent forward or kinked to the side. You might need two pillows if you sleep on your side, not just one. Support your knees with a small pillow if you sleep on your back or between your knees if you sleep on your side. At the same time, keep your bedroom cool. Cooler temperatures signal your body that it's time to go to deep sleep. Warmer rooms, which your body thinks might mean it's daytime, they make your heart and your metabolism work harder and it keeps you in a lighter sleep. And then deal with nighttime noise. Every unexpected sound is another reason for your brain to microwake and scan for danger. A car door slamming, a neighbor closing a cabinet, a dog barking outside, or your partner's phone buzzing, they can all create tiny awakenings that you never remember. Earplugs might be helpful if your environment is really noisy. Every time your brain has to choose between checking for danger and staying in deep sleep, it'll always choose survival first. That's good for staying alive, but terrible for your hormones. Now you can do all these things to try to fix your deep sleep and still notice that it's not working. Because there's one thing almost every guy does at night that tells his brain it is noon, right before bed. And that thing starts in your eyes. There's a hidden signal in every room, every night, that quietly destroys sleep quality and blocks your testosterone production. It's not a chemical, it's a signal. Blue, violet, green, and amber light at night tells your brain that it's still daytime. Your eyes have special cells that are not there to help you see pictures. They're there to measure light to tell your body what time it is. It doesn't take much light to hit those sensors. When light from your phone, your TV, your overhead LEDs hits those cells, they send a message straight to your brain's master clock called the SCN or suprachiasmatic nucleus. That body clock doesn't care what the time on your phone says, it only cares about light. And if it sees white light or blue light of those other colors, it assumes the sun is up. So if you wake up to go to the bathroom and you turn the lights on, you've told your brain it is not night anymore. The SCN controls melatonin release. Melatonin is not just the sleep hormone that people talk about on supplement labels. It's a timing signal for your mitochondria. It tells your body that it's nighttime and it's time to begin the process of deep repair. When anything other than red light hits your eyes at night, the master clock turns melatonin down and delays it. Your body stays in a kind of fake daytime, 
where it's not fully awake, but it's not allowed to drop into deep sleep either. And I've already explained your body produces most of its testosterone during deep sleep. Even five seconds of kitchen lights or bathroom lights can change the clock in your body. And if you're doing 20 or 30 minutes of scrolling on your phone in bed and you haven't dimmed the screen all the way and given it a red filter, well, it's no wonder that your sleep isn't going to work very well and your sleep timing will move forward so you don't get deep sleep. It's like giving yourself a mild case of jet lag without ever getting on a plane. Your deep sleep arrives later and becomes shorter. The pulses of testosterone that start early in the night get pushed into a weaker part of your sleep and you feel it the next morning. Over time, your morning testosterone levels drop, your daytime energy flattens, and your sex drive drops. But the worst thing maybe is that testosterone also drives motivation, so you feel less motivated. You're not gonna connect it to the light because the habit feels normal. Every guy you know has lights on at night. Here's what to do with your eyes if you want to protect your testosterone. The simplest way to fix your light environment at night is with true dark glasses that look like this. I invented these about 10 years ago because nothing on the market solves the real problem. Most glasses only block blue light, but TrueDark filters the entire spectrum of junk light. The blue, the green, the violet, the amber, the exact wavelengths that disrupt your melatonin, your circadian timing, and your deep sleep. That means you can still unwind, you watch a show, or read under a lamp without paying the hormonal price. It's essentially noise-canceling headphones for your eyes. We even published a study showing that true dark glasses shift your brain waves into a calmer state within 15 minutes of putting them on. They help you wind down faster, fall asleep more easily, and protect the deep sleep window where you make testosterone. Go to truedark.com and use code DAVETUBE to get a discount. Ideally, you should give yourself a screen curfew too. At least 60 minutes before bed, turn off phones, laptops, and tablets. 90 minutes is even better. But let's face it, you probably won't do that. So dim the screen as much as you can, put on your true darks, and enjoy your social media. And if you're gonna watch something, watch it on a TV that's further away from your eyes, not a phone that you're holding inches from your face. That'll reduce the intensity of the light signal that hits your master clock. And if you're watching TV, dim the TV and wear your true darks. And you wanna change the kind of light your eyes see in the evening. Swap harsh overhead white or bright white LEDs for softer lamps with warm or amber bulbs with dimmers. About an hour to an hour and a half at least before bed, dim the room as much as you can. Throughout all of human history, we only had moonlight and candlelight until very recently. Your house should look like that when the sun is down. Your eyes need to see the day ending before your hormones ever will. When you make your environment darker and warmer in color, you send your master clock a clear message that the sun is going down and it's time for melatonin to rise. Think about it. What colors are in sunsets? Sunsets are dimmer. That's what your house should be like. Put your devices into night mode, turn on the warm color shift, not just at bedtime, but as much as you can all day so you're not blasting your eyes with unnecessary blue light without all the other frequencies that should be there. And turn your screen brightness down to the lowest comfortable level, especially in the last few hours of the night. You don't need a bright rectangle of noonday light in your face at 11 p.m. When you do this, your brain finally knows what time it is. Melatonin will rise when it should, and your deep sleep can start earlier and become more stable. And that means your energy is more stable. Your sex drive starts to feel like it belongs to someone whose biology is working, not shutting down. So when you combine good timing, strong deep sleep quality, light control, and a calm nighttime environment, you create the perfect recipe for hormone repair. Your morning testosterone peaks grow stronger. Your muscle recovery improves because your growth hormone pulses actually fire when they should. Your mood stabilizes because your sleep architecture is finally intact. So you don't feel older than you are, and you feel like your biology is finally acting its age again. And even if you do all these things, there are other variables that can stop you from having enough testosterone, and it's an epidemic in people today, both men and women. And if you're a guy who has low testosterone or a guy over 40, go to daveasprey.com slash testosterone, and I'll tell you how to raise it without injecting anything.